You may be wondering what exactly is a whole food plant-based diet? What do you eat? What don't you eat? Is it the same as a vegan diet? These were all the same questions I had when I first learned about this way of eating. I'm Stephanie Leach. I'm a certified health coach and juice therapist. And in this video, I'm going to share with you exactly what a whole food plant-based diet is and is not. I'll also share with you how you can get started with this way of eating. Now, if you're interested in juicing or a whole food plant-based lifestyle so you can achieve and maintain a healthy weight and get the body and health that you've always wanted, uh, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Now, the term whole food plant-based was coined by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. You may have heard of him. He is the author of The China Study and Whole. He's really been at the forefront of nutrition research since the 1970s, especially in regard to how diet and disease are related. Now this way of eating is based on whole or minimally processed plant foods. It includes vegetables, legumes, grains, fruit, nuts, and seeds. The diet is free of animal foods, so there's no meat, poultry, fish, dairy, or eggs and oil is minimized or greatly reduced. Uh, salt is kept to a minimum and there are no highly refined or processed sweeteners. While this is technically a vegan or pure vegetarian diet, it's more specific. The vegan diet is merely the absence of animal foods. Now, while many vegans do eat a healthy whole food diet, by definition, a vegan diet could include a lot of highly processed mock meats or uh, other processed foods or oily cheese substitutes, fried foods, a lot of salt, sugar. Uh, for instance, potato chips and Oreos are vegan, but no one would actually claim those are health promoting. I want to assure you that eating this way is not about deprivation. I have to say when my diet was still centered on animal foods and I was eating what was considered to be a balanced meal, I just couldn't imagine being satisfied with a meal that didn't include meat, cheese, or dairy of some kind, or eggs. It seemed very limiting to remove those foods. But what I found was actually the opposite. Um, by focusing on plant foods, my diet actually expanded to include a lot of foods and cuisines that I ate rarely or had never even tried before. When I was eating the standard American diet, I pretty much ate the same vegetables over and over again. I had corn and green beans and mashed potatoes, a green salad. Sometimes I'd pick up a bag of the frozen vegetables with the mystery cheese sauces. But really it was, it was kind of boring. And if you've got default vegetables in your diet, let me know what they are in the comments. I think we all have them. I have way more diversity in my diet now than I ever did when I was eating animal products. For instance, when we talk about eating vegetables, that includes a wide array of foods. The vegetable group includes leafy greens, like salad greens, like romaine and baby spinach and red leaf lettuce and butter lettuce and all the things you put in a salad. It also includes sturdier greens like um, beet greens, kale, collard greens, spinach greens, um, lots of different turnip greens. So leafy greens can be eaten raw in salads or juiced um, or added to cooked dishes. You would also include non-starchy vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli, bell peppers and cucumbers. All of these foods can be eaten raw, juiced, or cooked. Then you've got root vegetables. And this includes the carrots, beets, parsnips, turnips, potatoes, you know, red potatoes, white potatoes, gold potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, these starchy plant foods contribute to satiety and it's an important part of the diet. Um, some are good raw or juiced and others are better cooked to increase digestibility. We also have legumes. Now this includes all kinds of beans. You've got black beans, kidney beans, 
uh, white beans, cannellini beans, you know, all the standard beans you know, and then there's lots of other beans that you probably haven't explored. Um, it includes lentils, you know, there's red lentils and green lentils and the tiny French lentils, and they each have their own properties and do better in different types of dishes. Um, legumes also include soy, whole soy products, you know, the soybean is a legume. So it includes soy foods like tempeh and tofu and soy milk. And these foods provide lots of plant-based protein and fiber, which is missing from animal protein. Lots of phytonutrients, which you don't get with animal protein. And um, plant-based proteins help you stay fuller, longer, and better balance your blood sugar. Now, beans and lentils can be sprouted and eaten raw or cooked. Next part of the diet is whole grains. Now this includes minimally processed whole grain flours like wheat, spelt, barley, rye, oat, and buckwheat. It includes cornmeal. It also includes other types of whole grains like rices. We've got brown rice and red rice and black rice. Um, it includes wheat berries and bulgur and steel cut and rolled oats and pseudo grains like which are really seeds, but we treat like a grain like wild rice and quinoa. So those are just a few of the whole grains that can be included in your diet. So um, it can include whole grain bread and corn tortillas, um, sprouted grain tortillas and the like. You just have to read the labels and watch out for added oils and sugars. Now an easy part of a whole food plant-based diet is fruit. Now fruit is a perfectly packaged snack or dessert full of phytonutrients and wonderful nutrition for you that tastes good. Uh, there are so many varieties of apples, pears, citrus fruits, stone fruits, and berries to explore. Fresh or frozen fruit is fine. Um, ripe bananas are fantastic in smoothies to add sweetness. Um, they make wonderful nice creams. Um, adding an apple or a pear to a green juice adds some sweetness and makes it very tasty. And when you eliminate a lot of added sugars and processed sugars from your diet, you really discover and appreciate the natural sweetness of fruit. Next part of the diet, it's a small part, but an important part is nuts and seeds. Um, these provide healthy fats in their whole preferred whole food form. That includes walnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews. Nuts can be soaked and blended with other ingredients to make really delicious and tasty cheese-like sauces and dressings. Um, hemp seeds and ground flax seeds provide uh, omega-3s and can be added to smoothies or sprinkled on top of food. Um, then you've got pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Those are great sprinkled into salads. Um, you also have nut and seed butters like tahini, sun butter, and almond butter. Um, if you haven't explored beyond peanut butter, you might be surprised at the range of nuts and seed butters that are available. And I also want to include spices as part of a whole food plant-based diet because it's often the spices that make a dish, right? Um, some of my favorites include um, smoked paprika, chili powder, and cumin. And I find that when I use the same spices in my vegetable dishes that I used to use in my meat-based di meat dishes, um, I get the same flavor profile and enjoy, you know, foods that I used to enjoy when I ate animal foods. Now, all of these plant foods can, can be combined in a myriad combinations to create delicious meals that are satisfying. Once your taste buds make the transition, you may find that you never crave animal foods again. Now, there are so many benefits to this way of eating. You're likely to live longer and healthier. The studies show that individuals that eat a purely vegan, plant-based diet um, have the healthiest weight and live the longest with the least rates of disease. I'm 47, almost 48, and this way of eating has allowed me to achieve my goal weight at a time in my life when many women and men struggle to, to maintain a healthy weight. Um, I don't count calories or macronutrients. Once you get the basics down, this way of eating is very intuitive and natural and easy. I pretty much eat what I want and I'm able to maintain my weight. And I'm looking forward to many disease-free years to come.
Now, if you want sustainable weight loss or you want to reverse a chronic condition like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, um, high blood pressure, maybe you have painful arthritis, uh, the science is in. I encourage you to read The China Study or Whole by Dr. Campbell or watch the movie uh, Forks Over Knives uh, where his research is shared. You can find it on Netflix. Now thousands of people are adopting this way of eating and reaping the benefits. It's not as marginal as it seems. Um, my clients report sounder sleep. They forget to take their Ambien. They have better digestion. Um, there's no constipation and the stomach pain goes away. Um, they also have greatly or reduced or eliminated joint pain. Unless you've got an injury, it shouldn't hurt to move. Um, life should be enjoyable and you should have the energy to pursue your, your passions and your goals. So this way of eating is very anti-inflammatory and health promoting. So if you're ready to get started, you can download my whole food, plant-based diet and lifestyle action guide. I'll provo provide a link to it um, below. If you found this information helpful, um, please share it with me in the comments below. Also, please share any questions that you have about a whole food plant-based diet and lifestyle. I want to make sure that I'm answering those questions in future videos. Yeah, I post daily on Instagram at Stephanie Leach HC. And if you're on Facebook, please join my free Facebook group for people interested in juicing in a whole food plant-based diet and lifestyle. I'll also link to that below. So, lots of hugs and health to you. I'll see you in the next video.